uh, Stuart Mark from BBC. Uh, yeah. Before we look forward, I look back to that well worn one here. You're probably the personification of a seven year age. Just how does it feel that seven year wait to get that second Six Nations outing? Hadn't heard that one yet. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, great to get out there, great to get a win. Um, obviously, I lost my first game seven in the Six Nations seven years ago, so it was nice to get out there and get the win at the, the Principality. What do you think it is that Andy Farrell sees that, that, that Joe Smith didn't? Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm a better player now than I was back then. Um, uh, I think the game's improved. There's always been a lot of competition in there during the year, so uh, maybe I just didn't fit Joe's eye, but um, hey, that's in the past, nothing to worry about now. And is this the single most important game, arguably, of your career, and that it's world number one against world number two in your own backyard, and it's a game which probably fell mostly where you thought you might never feature in? Uh, I hadn't really thought about it in a personal context, but... In a team context, yeah, it's one against two. Um, they haven't lost in 14 games. We're obviously number one in the world, and we lost against them last year away. So um, I suppose it's probably the biggest game of Six Nations, isn't it? Um, us against them, and listen, it's, uh, it'll hopefully decide what how it goes, the tournament. So, yeah, it's a massive game. Just one final one for me, if you don't mind. Uh, last time around, COVID came uh, and scuppered your chance when you were probably very much in the running to play against France. Does this feel like the closing of a circle now for you that at last you're getting that opportunity? Again, I haven't really thought too deep into it. You've probably thought more than me, but uh, yeah, it's, it'll be nice to get another game in a row just uh, for myself. Like, it went pretty well last week. There's obviously things to improve on, but um, I'm just looking to get put in a good performance this week and hopefully that leads to a team win. Wish you well. Thanks. Thanks. Stuart, do you have many conversations with Andy about his performance and, and what he is happy with? Uh, yeah, we had a chat yesterday just about how the game went. Um, he obviously had a couple of things for me to improve on from the weekend. Um, he's happy with other things, but yeah, I think every performance he looks into, each individual, pretty pretty in-depthly. So yeah, he had things for me to work on, and I, I agreed. Yeah, it was stuff I looked at as well, and um, hopefully I can sort of bring that to the game this week. How much confidence do you take from the fact that the last four games you've won that you, you have started? Yeah, it's obviously great. It's like it's easy when you're coming into such a good team. Like we have, we're number one in the world. We haven't lost too much over the last sort of twenty four months. So um, I think it's more the confidence of going to a team that's playing very well and just fitting in and not trying to do anything too special. Just playing my own game. That's that's sort of what I've taken from it. And just lastly, looking ahead to France, um, it's going to be a different, a totally different game this weekend. Um, how are you approaching it? Yeah, obviously confident. Um, we're normally very good at home, at touch wood. Um, so, yeah, um, we're going with confidence. Like, we've won our last, was it, four games, two of them away in New Zealand. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd be fairly confident, but you never know in this game. Stuart, when you say you think you're a better player now, what specifically did you work on? Or what areas did you improve on to get you a regular starting spot or at the moment anyway? I think everything all around. Um, I think I just know the game better now than I did when I was 23, 24. Um, I know I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how Andy wants us to play the game, uh, understand where I need to be and how to help the rest of the team. Um, it's not just sort of about how I'm playing, it's how I get everybody else involved in the game. And Obviously, he can still carry, he can still offload, but I think some of the passing game and hopefully some of the kicking games shone through over the last two or three years, not just for Ireland, but from the club. When you look at the France Italy match, and, and I know you expected a better performance from France, but what aspects from, of their performance do you think you can put into your game plan? I don't want to give too much away, do you? Um, no, Italy are, like, Italy are a pretty good team now. Like, it's not it's not a surprise that they've put in such a good performance against France. I don't think the French play terribly. I think just that they have improved so much over the last few years. So, um, no, there's things we've been looking at this week. I think we concentrate more on ourselves and what the French are doing, to be honest. So, uh, um, I don't really take too much part in what the game plan is. I sort of know what I have to do. Sure. Sure. What you looking forward to the day when you walk in here and don't ask you about how much speed you read and how all that? No, it's still nice to come in here. Uh, no, it'll be like, if we keep on streaming games together and good performances and wins. Like hopefully, it won't be coming in here too much. And oh, it's been a while the, since my last cap. So yeah, that'll be five in a row now at the weekend. So uh, yeah, it's it's a nice place to be in. So this. Do you feel incrementally more comfortable each time? Like even the fact that you threw out a good pass to your first push inside of the you just it again straight away? Uh, yes, because that's the time in the shirt. It's it's the age as well. Like I've, I've played rugby a lot longer now. I feel a lot more comfortable with 
with my game and what I can do. Um, I'd say whether that's in the first minute or that's in the 80th minute, I am fairly comfortable with how to play the game now where maybe I was overthinking a bit when I was younger. Some of your best game come against French teams for Ulster, you know, you've gone up to lose, La Rochelle over time. What, what have you learned about playing against some of their best players in those times? And what do you gain from going towards the and playing well against them? I think I've learned... Uh, don't kick a kick off to Dupont against Toulouse. That was a good one when he went to eighty meters at the start. Um, no, like they all have unbelievable individual moments. Like there's been times in the games where you all see sit back and you're like, this guy's out of out of this world. But um, I think what I've learned really is like you can grind them down. There's mistakes in them. Um, you stick to your game plan. Don't let them get that momentum and get in the front foot and get those wee short balls off nine. Um, you can really get into them and you can force mistakes on them. There's mistakes in them. As you were before the Wales game, there were some last minute changes. Ian Healy, James Gibson, Kerr, obviously he's tied for a long time, which you did with advance. As a squad, what's your initial reaction when you hear news like that last night? Um, it's obviously disappointing. Like They're obviously great players for us and they have been over the last few years. So um, it's disappointing when they're not playing, but it's full confidence in everybody that's in this squad at the minute and anybody that comes in. Um, I think everybody has a really good understanding of what we want to do as a team whereas maybe in the years gone by people coming in didn't so um, I had full confidence in the guys coming in I know Andy obviously had full confidence in the guys coming in and they showed that at the weekend yeah, That feeds into the squad depth that everybody talks about about this squad in particular is that something that's changed over the years say when you made your debut for Ireland and now? Yeah definitely well I can speak for the centres first hand uh, there's pretty good depth there with um, the four of us and Jamie coming in now and James Ewan playing up at Ulster as well so um, yeah I think every position there's a good lot of depth now and that's something that I know they've been striving for over the years if you'd lost one one player in the years gone by you might have struggled but I think now nearly every position you've got someone nip at the heels of the guy who has a shirt Sure, you ever played out with really match against friends uh, Andy I don't think has coached an Irish team that's played the match? Nope, never played France from one, so never played France. So, what do you think of it? You know, Ireland can beat, don't beat France in Dublin. Is there an American saying they could struggle to beat them in the World Cup in France? You, you probably would say that, wouldn't you? But we could have a bad day, they could have a brilliant day. It's that's rugby sometimes, isn't it? I don't think. Like we're not looking at the World Cup right now, so we're not. We're looking at winning the Six Nations and winning this game. It's not really. It's obviously a plan in place for the World Cup, but I know the players aren't thinking about it right now. The players are thinking about what the next game is and winning the Six Nations first. Um, listen, France could come out on Saturday and put in the best performance of all time, and we might lose playing against a brilliant team. But that's rugby. Sure, you've had some astonishing support uh, on television from, say, Stephen Ferris, who has. Just demand that you get in the team at the risk of of, of himself following out with other people. The Ulster fans have been terrific. The, the, the boards have been, well, for, you know, for years, like for a long, long time. Was that any help to you? Was that any kind of a beacon as as things went on? Around? No, it's always nice to hear, especially from your like, home fans. Um, I suppose they're the ones that were watching me play every week and um, maybe not understand the decisions why I wasn't playing, but. Uh, like I always thought like the guys that were in there were doing a good job. There was times at the start, yeah, under Joe, where I thought maybe didn't get the rub of the green, but the guys who were last years, Bundy and Robbie, have been playing unbelievably when they play for Ireland. So um to me, like it's nice to hear it's nice to hear like your fans giving you that support, but I understood the decision why I wasn't playing at times, so it it helped, but that that was that's rugby, isn't it? I had a look at that England match again quickly. What, what I wrote on a number of people wrote that's the, the match in which you were dropped, and uh, a number of the newspapers thought you were man of the match. That's the match in Twickenham. So that's a different coach now. Can you tell you anything as to why you were dropped? It was never explained fully to the media. We all thought it was a really stand up game. Okay, Ireland lost. Was that, did that play in your head, or was there any explanation given to you? I honestly can't really remember the game now. I remember bits of it. Uh... Like no, I don't remember anything being said after. Um, I remember Jared was coming back. Jared Payne was coming back from injury, and it was me, him, and Robbie with the centre. So I think it was the next game after that, and he brought Jared back in. And I wasn't a team, and it was time where Joe wouldn't put a centre on the bench. So it wasn't if I wasn't starting, I wasn't going to play. So that maybe played a bit into it. But no, um, like it's been a long time. Obviously, it was 
probably had a bit more hard feelings at the time, but I'm a bit older. It's uh, that's that's the way it is. Sometimes you don't get you don't get the luck. You don't get the rub of the green. Thanks. Does it make you relish every time you do get it now, like a little bit more? What you yeah, like it's not what I, I I don't know what to say. It's not what I've been through. It's not the end of the world. It's only it's only rugby at the end of the day. But obviously. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into trying to be the best rugby player I can be. So yeah, it's nice. It's nice when you do get games. Um, it's nice to get in there and um, show what I can do. And like I think it went pretty well over the last five games, well four games, hopefully five at the weekend. So yeah, it's nice. Like I think everybody else is playing for Ireland. It's it's the pinnacle sort of our of your game, isn't it? it? Shows it's kind of like how to put it. I'm struggling for words, but yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of where I, the pinnacle I wanted to get to. So yeah, it's a nice plan. Do you feel those tough moments got you to this point? Like, do you think to be the player you are, if you didn't have those low times? Maybe, like maybe it, a lot of it's time insured as well. Sometimes, isn't it? Like if if you're playing a lot of games, uh, I feel like I could have got a run of form and maybe play a lot more games early on in my career. But yeah, it makes you. I, I'd say it makes me relish a bit more when I am playing so yeah it, it, I do appreciate it a lot more now I plan No no I, did, I didn't but uh, I'd speak to Stevie every time he's doing the the Ulster games and stuff so yeah no, I've uh, I've always seen he's been a, a big supporter Are they, When you look at the footage of France over the last you know, three years that have all of them are they very different from what France playing instead of France you just present very different pictures uh, yeah, Dante's fairly direct, isn't he? I knew that from well, saw that when we were playing La Rochelle. He was, he was pretty devastating against us when we were playing the Aviva there. Um, I think the game changes a lot. I think Rafan has a bit more, some more guile about his game. He's a bit better feet and stuff, but Dante's that physical threat, isn't he? He's great at the breakdown, so that'll be something we won't miss at the weekend. You think so much is it just being alive at the time where you don't, that you, that you have to be alive, that you can't predict anything that you can't do? Yeah, I think some of the stuff they do, like, they're obviously well coached in defence and stuff, but, like, a lot of it's off the cuff. It's just DuPont or Antimac or any of their backs, really, like, bouncing out, putting a, getting a hand off, and making a break, getting an offload. And that's when they're at their most dangerous. So it's just constantly staying switched on, isn't it? And being aware of that, like, not a lot of teams can do what they can do.